Big Clizzy. How you doing today, my brother? Fantastic. I don't know. It, doesn't it feel like a weight has been lifted? I don't know what it is, man. It just feels it feels good around here. What's he doing here? Hey, Steve. Buddy. What you doing here? Oh, yeah? You're in the union? I'm never going to get rid of this guy. All right. All right. Feels different now, Clyde. Feels different. Put me on. Welcome to UBTV. I'm your host, the nigga who first told you you weren't from Africa. I know you may be hearing it from everybody right now. But remember who told you first. It's funny. When I first started dropping this, because, you know, at one point, even I was a Pan-Africanist. But after doing my own legitimate research, I came to this conclusion on my own. And what happened to all the people who were supporting me at the time? Oh, they just, they threw a nigga in the trash. I was all kinds of niggas and coons. But it's funny. Because those very same so-called Pan-Africans from back in the day, oh, they're dancing a new tune. Slowly but surely, they're coming over here. You know, I'm not looking for any credit because nobody owns the truth. But I'll be damned if somebody don't owe me a fucking apology. For those of you who are new to this information, check out Lost at Home. It's a series I've been working on since approximately 2016. Um, and there's plenty of information within the series for you to actually do a lot of your own research based upon just the small amount of nuggets that you'll be able to get from a series that at this point is probably as long as five or six hours of complete content. Anyway, somebody owes me a fucking apology. Much love to everybody who's been supporting your boy. And if for any reason you donate and you haven't received a video, just make sure you shoot me an email and I'll get over to you as fast as I can, bro. Understand I do all my correspondence myself. So, you know, a lot of times I will literally wake up at four o'clock in the morning roll over and see that I need to reply to an email and do it at four o'clock in the morning and roll over and go back to sleep. But sometimes I may not get a notification or something like that. That's cool. Understand I just do everything myself. So I'm not a machine guys, I'm just one guy. And for all of you who are actually into the real work that I do, cause I don't really consider this the real work that I do. The real work is the documentaries. If you guys have been watching Hule or if you've been watching The Smartest Beast in the Field, you'll notice that the last episodes, episode six of Boule and 2.6 of Smartest Beast in the Field, they're starting to intertwine. And you're going to see more of that interconnection in the next episode, episode seven of Boule and episode 2.7 of The Smartest Beast in the Field. It just so happened to work out that way. But now that I can see how they can come together, it's a beautiful thing because I know when I write things, I kind of have a vision of where it's going to go. And it's beautiful when you really do legitimate work and you kind of let the work lead you somewhere where you think you're going to go. In many cases, it's not where you're actually going to go. You kind of get led by the groundbreaking discoveries that you make through legitimate research, as opposed to presupposing your outcome and finding ways to lead you to that specific outcome. Um, so that's one of the more legitimate things about any researcher who can decide to work on a project and think that that project is going to end in a certain place. But by the time they get to the end of the project, they're like, oh shit, I'm over here. 
And over, over there is not even a real place. The place that they thought they were going to go is not even real. So understand that it takes a lot to do this fucking work. I know a lot of people are waiting on the next episode. Just the research to do these projects takes forever. And not to mention writing, which also takes forever. Writing absolutely takes more time than any... Well, actually, research takes more time than anything. But then writing takes the second most amount of time because now I've got all of this research and information that I have to conceptualize into a cohesive formula. So the beautiful thing even about these documentaries is that honestly, guys, I'm, I can only put a very small percentage of my research into the documentary. There's just not enough time. There's not enough. Do you understand that if I put everything that I could possibly put into a documentary, it would never end? Because in many cases, you'll find information and you need context to back up the information. You can't just throw statements out like, hey, we're not from Africa, right? And then just move on. You really have to provide a historical context to all of these answers if you're really going to stand on, you know, this position as a truth. Um, and, you know, ultimately, when I'm making these videos, I just have to find which information is the most important and keep it moving because, yeah, there's a ton of information that I would love to put in everything. But and you'll see why I make series now. So for you guys who were following me back in the day, I used to just make like a single documentary. And then I realized that there was so much information in that subject area that it's just impossible to make a documentary and feel like you covered anything that was necessary for a person, a viewer to get a full scope of, you know, the objective of your documentary, which ultimately for me is always to get you to learn something in a new area. More so than anything, I try not to give you answers or give you what I think about something as much as it is I give you the information and you can tell how I feel about something through my presentation. But ultimately, it's your information to decipher with however you wish to. And I think that's important, especially with our people when it comes to research. We need to be able to provide the information in objective context because the truth doesn't, it doesn't need any glitter on top of it, bro. Real talk. So I did get a chance to check out uh, some of these comments from the last video. And I just want to say this, man, listen, bro, every man is not a woman and every woman is not a man. Kintanji Brown Jackson is not a man. She's not a man, guys. All right? Just because a woman is rough book, a little rough around the edges, that don't mean she's a man. Oh, shit. That's her? Whoo! Shit, man, you scared the fuck out of me. Good God. Man, th throw her up there, though. Ugh. Ugh. All right. Uh. Yes, she does have a strong Nordic Viking chin. So what? Her face does kind of resemble home plate. That's because that bitch is a home run. And yes, she does look like an unseasoned version of Crisco Supreme. That's because she eats less fried foods. You niggas always talking about the hips don't lie. Well, if the hips don't lie, I'm scared of the truth. You niggas running around here talking about Kentaji Brown Jackson's a man. Look at her. Look at her features. I mean, look at them. All right. Let's just say she was a man. What would her name be? No, I need you guys to put it in the comments. All right. Put Kentaji Brown's new name in the comments if she were to be a man since she can't define what a woman is and some of her features aren't necessarily the most feminine. What would her name be? I, I'm simple, okay? You know, I know I gave you Aquafetus last week, which was flames, fire, but I'm going to go simple this time. Kentavious Brown Jackson. Because to me... Contavious Brown Jackson sounds like an ill-ass football player. 
You know what I mean? Like, a nigga who got drafted in the third round, but, like, made the Pro Bowl, like, twice. Had, like, a nice 10-year career. Yeah, Contavious Brown Jackson. Sounds like a football player with lesbian moms, of course. Right. The mom is the moms. Brown and Jackson are both the mom's last names. I mean, he had a father, but... I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe his mom's his father. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Contavious. <laughs> okay, so we got Contavious, right? We got Contavious Brown Jackson. What would his pronoun be? Them? They? Those? It? Whoops. Speaking of whoops, did you hear about the the nigga in a New Jersey prison, a trans man, transman, transformer, a Decepticon? Well, he's he's all right. When did they start letting niggas in women's prisons? I don't understand that. That's When did they let a nigga with a full dick into a women's prison? I don't know, man. That just seems, that seems to be a little fugaze. That's all I'm saying. At this point, attention all New Jersey Drive suspect niggas. They now have a loophole for you niggas to go to prison without getting raped and actually flip your position in the prison social hierarchy from rapey to raper. According to this article at NBC, that the gay niggas don't even have to provide any historical information about their past transformerism. Does it make sense? Basically, they don't have to prove that they were gay before the bracelets hit them. So you could go rob a bank, get caught by the police, and start identifying as a woman from that moment, and they're going to put you in a men in a woman's prison. Wow, bro. So go on, gay niggas of New Jersey, rep trans, and flip the worst years of your life into the best years of your life. Locked behind bars with depraved, deprived criminal coochie. Pink is the new brown gay niggas. Sounds like a pretty good deal. And I know it seems weird, but this scheme seems crazy enough to bring some of these gay niggas home. And since we're playing these fucking games, all butch lesbians. Any woman who identifies as anything other than a woman, report to the men's prison since we're playing these games. And see if Ellen don't get the degenerates fucked right on up out. After two months in lockup, even the most putrid lesbians, Rosie O'Donnell and Wanda Sykes, be tag teaming niggas. Queen Latifah be unturned the fuck out. Yeah, let's play these fucking games. Any so-called woman who identifies as anything other than a woman, throw her ass in with the men since how one identifies and feels all of a sudden supersedes a God-given truth, a natural truth, a biological truth, a scientific truth. Since this is what we're going to do, let's go all the way with it. How could you place a man who feels like a woman into a women's prison if you won't place a woman who feels like a man into a men's prison, seems rather hypocritical to me. Let's go all the way with it. What's the worst that could happen? Legit, let's lock it in like a driver's license for seven years. None of this fluidity, jumping back and forth between sexuality. Nah, bitch. If you want to be a lesbian, you're going to be a lesbian for this seven years. 
And then you'll find out that a lot of lesbians are only men when it's convenient. Let's be honest. Would you rather serve hard time or have someone serving you during the times you were hard? Seems like a no-brainer. But if you're not gay, definitely a brainer. It's difficult being a woman in a men's prison. I have faced rape, being assaulted, discrimination. Being referred as he can be sometimes degrading. Sometimes you have low self-esteem because they look at you if you wear makeup and they want to talk crazy behind your back or to your face and you can't do nothing about it. There's a lot of these guys that don't understand transgender living and we just don't like hear from the inmates, we hear from the staff as well. I've been incarcerated now for 14 and a half years. Three years. 23 and a half years. I've been incarcerated for 30 years now and I prefer to be in a woman's prison because I look at myself as a transgender woman and I should be treated as a woman. Hi Ashton, we checked your Instagram from three years ago and it says here that Susan is your wife. And so we know you're LGBT and you identify as non-binary. So we're gonna have to lock you in with men. Don't worry though, you'll have a wife in there. His name is Tyrone Grinder. Hell yeah, she. We know that transgender girl boys have been going to men's prisons since forever. But the minute a working dick enters a women's prison, the world changes. The only way to balance this out is to put a working pussy in a men's prison. Fact is, men, when incarcerated, want to be locked in a women's prison. Women, when they're incarcerated, want to be locked in a women's prison. So much for the patriarchy. So are you aware there's a teacher passing out the LGBT flags to the kids? I'm aware of our teachers. I'm not going to go into specifics of what they are and are not doing. If you'd like to have a sit down with the district office, you can arrange that. Well, no, you're the principal of the come. school. You're the principal of the school. I want to know, are you aware that one of your teachers is passing that out to children? I don't have to answer those questions right Why? now. Why? Have a good day. Oh, oh, oh hold on. Why? Hold on. Why? I'm not going to answer those questions. Why? Right why now. wouldn't you answer those questions? Let me ask you this. If a teacher's doing that, are you okay with it? I'm not going to answer those questions. Why? Ma'am, 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 ma'am. We're taxpayers and, and parents. There's no reason why you can't answer these questions. We, want, we just want an answer. Are you aware yeah. that this is happening at the school that you're charged to, to oversee? But I'm going to give you my explanation about what it means to be transgender as well. So when babies are born, the doctor looks at them and they make a guess about whether the baby is a boy or a girl based on what they look like. And most of the time, that guess is 100% correct. There are no issues whatsoever. Um, and, but sometimes the doctor is wrong. The doctor makes an incorrect guess. Um, when the doctor makes a correct guess, that's when a person is called cisgender. When a doctor's guess is wrong, that's when they are transgender. So I'm a man. But when I was a baby, the doctors told my parents I was a girl. And so my parents gave me a name that girls typically have and bought me clothes that girls typically wear. Um, and until I was 18 years old, everyone thought I was a girl. And this was super, super uncomfortable for me because I knew that wasn't right. Um, the way I like to describe it is like wearing a super itchy sweater. Um, the longer you wear it, the itchier it gets, and the only way to make the itching stop is to have everyone see and know the person that you really are. So when I was 18, I told my family and my friends that I'm really a boy, and it was like this huge weight had been lifted off of my shoulders, and I had the freedom to be who I truly am. And even though this experience is super challenging sometimes, um, I am su it made me the person I am, and I'm super proud to be transgender. Seriously, man, I think you're making a big mistake. Why don't you go back to the comment, man? This has been my first year in preschool. With a Did this bitch just say preschool? My first year in preschool with a class of my own, teaching alongside another 
queer neurodivergent educator, and we have been rocking our twos class. We've been talking about gender, and skin color, and consent, and empathy, and our bodies, and autonomy. It's been fabulous. Preschool bitch. But our teaching team is shifting, and a new person is being onboarded, someone with many years of experience. So today at the lunch table, when the topic of gender and genitals came up, one of our students... How does a conversation about genitalia come up with preschoolers? Up, one of our students plainly looked up and said, Well, I'm a girl today, but I know that Teacher Co isn't. No, they're Envy. And the look on the incoming teacher's face was priceless. She was shocked in a good way. And she just looked around at the two of us and said, This class is incredible, and I am so impressed. Oh, please. <laughs> Ask one of these androgynous libtards of TikTok if she feels like a man. And when she says yes, lock her up with the men. Watch her walk that shit all the way back to the dumpster. There's a cavalry of heathen bitches sent to brainwash your child with delusional gender identity fuckery. The worst thing you can do is to send your child to be educated by one of these libtard white bitches. Oh, you don't know? These white bitches who are teachers, their number one job is to teach your black child, especially your son, that they are stupid. Oh, there are plenty of men on the other side of the camera who had a white bitch in school trying to make them feel dumb for being smart. These bitches are holding the line. Now we got these blue haired non-binary freaks teaching your children about sexuality before they can even hold a fucking spoon. These are the same bitches who will go into a classroom of children who do not know them at all and introduce details about their sexuality and their relationships. When I was a kid, I didn't know if my teacher was gay, straight, married, or single. And I didn't fucking care. These are the bitches telling your black son that he's not smart enough. No, Tyrone, that's the wrong answer. I know that it's actually the correct answer, but you didn't show your 18-step indoctrination process to get to that answer. Wrong. Maybe we should put you in remedial classes because we want you to succeed. You sure you're not gay? Give me the fuck out of here, Clyde. One of the things that teachers always do at back to school night and meet the teacher and things like that is they like send home this cute little like meet the teacher thing where it has like a little bio about us some of our favorite stuff just so that you know who we are how do i do that next year do i lie and mm -hmm not talk about my marriage? Do I pretend I'm single? Do I invalidate my spouse's stance as a trans femme person? Or do I put my job on the line to introduce myself? What the fuck is this bitch talking about? What am I supposed to do? What the fuck is this bitch talking about? I don't know. Imagine this, the entire narrative that you've been spoon-fed by the media about the Ukraine-Russia conflict is complete bullshit. Imagine that. Imagine it. Imagine all of this shit just being complete bullshit. I mean, how long have they been trying to spoon-feed us GMO seeds of false Russian fuckery? At least since the days of Hillary Clinton and her calcified muff pouch. Anytime you say anything that challenges their official narrative, it's Russian disinformation. 
You know, this is the same catch-all phrase used by non-critical thinkers. From the loins of the same tards who throw around the phrase conspiracy theorist. Don't you know truth is stranger than fiction, bitch? Oh, okay. So to you, gender identity is truth and nature is fiction. Okay. So to you, CNN is truth and Torah's fiction? Oh, evolution is true and hybridization is fiction. Exactly how long does it take two monkeys to fuck themselves into humans? Was it 50,000 years? Was it 500,000 years? Was it 500 million years? Was it 500 trillion years? Go on, I'll wait. And while we're waiting, we can see how long it takes two chihuahuas to fuck themselves back in the wolves. The only wolves here are the ones who are claiming tolerance. It's funny. You see all these pray for Ukraine signs, but where are the pray for Russia signs? Seems rather hypocritical to me. These are the same people who preach tolerance across the board. Well, why ain't nobody praying for Russia, bitch? Ain't nobody gonna pray for Russia? Why doesn't the news report the fact that Ukrainians are killing their own people? And that Ukrainians are taking up arms against their supposedly owned military because they feel like they're fighting a corrupt regime. We don't see that in the media. For some reason, the news conveniently forgets to report that the US and UK are essentially funding terrorism by these Ukrainian nationalist militia neo-Nazi groups who turn out to be killing children? And using civilians as human shields. Is this speculation? Does anything that I just said sound like it's not true? Конкретно город Мариуполь и его жители не воспринимают как своих, они, ну, даже не знаю, говорилось слово «живой щит», сказать людям «проезжайте», а потом стрелять им в спину. Подлее, наверное, ничего не придумаешь. Что сегодня просто случайно узнали, что есть какой-то коридор через море, не могут выскочить. Чудом, вот, на свой страх и риск. Вот, вот это вот, семью брал и ехали на удачу. Вот это вот. Расстрелять, стрелять, ну, нет, значит, нет. Да, это рассказывали, что доезжали, кто-то пытался выехать, отбирали детей, машину стреляли вверх, возвращали назад. Танк, ВСУ, Вооруженных сил Украины. На Комсомольском бульваре, если там у нас такой на углу дома ездил и наводил, просто прямой наводкой стрелял по э, жилым домам. У меня есть подозрение, что наша Украина обстреливала же мирных жителей, потому что ДНР еще на территории Мариуполя на тот момент не было. Ну, Во-первых, они прикрываются мирными жителями, а во-вторых, выводят мирных жителей и пытаются под видом мирных жителей уходить значит, на нашу сторону. Бомбил, были азовцы, потому что были инциденты в городе о том, что ВСУ отходило, а азов их как бы пытался остановить, была стрельба между ними. Азов не выпускает, расстрелял два автобуса. Они там дети были, люди кричат, что вы делаете, это же дети. Они, они сказали, что на войне детей и стариков нет. Это ад. Стреляли по нас, по нас. Азов стрелял, Азов. Мы это лично видели. Я лично видела. Пусть все знают, пусть весь мир знает. Азов и правый сектор нас убивал. Просто-напросто, тупо, понимаете? Whether it's in accordance with jihadi ideology or a global white nationalist, neo-Nazi group. Take a look at the tactics of the Ukrainian military and ISIS, for example. You'd be hard-pressed to tell them apart. Human shields, torture, prisoner executions. The New York Times, which typically tries to whitewash the crimes of these neo-Nazi regiments, even verified one of the many videos portraying them on the internet as undoubtedly authentic. This is their MO. We've seen this game plan before. 
hire your proxy terrorist group, go fight a blacklisted, undercover, covert battle, and when shit hits the fan, you can disconnect yourself from any of the fuckery you try to pull out there in the field. Hey, you're bought and paid for terrorists, kill children, you can dismiss it as some offshoot rogue Ukrainian neo-Nazi terrorist faction acting on their own accord. But the whole time, they're funded by the government through NGOs. See how that works? In the case of Russia and Ukraine, one journalist even speculated that all these terrorist factions were indeed NATO forces. Um, you have this government that is extremely nationalistic, and you have this armed force that has these you know, Nazi elements. And what's key is that there was the Azov Battalion and the Aden Battalion, that they were specific uh, army units that were hyper-nationalistic, hyper-neo-Nazi, hyper, you know, all the rest of it. Um, but at the same time, a lot of these neo-Nazi, hyper-nationalistic elements were filtered throughout the Ukraine armed forces. And so what happened is that this uh, mentality seeped throughout the armed forces. And at the same time, they were being trained by NATO in very sophisticated tactics. And they were being armed by NATO with very sophisticated weapons. And so we have a, <laughs> it's hard to believe, but it's true. We have a um, neo-Nazi NATO army, which is what the Russians decided, you know, enough's enough. Mm. And uh, the, the trigger for it was the Russians got wind that the Ukrainians planned to invade the breakaway republics in a lightning strike. This is a list of journalists Lira put together saying they had been persecuted by the Ukrainian authorities for dissent. Put my name on this list if I'm not heard from in 12 hours, Lira tweeted. It's been days. I just want to say uh, that I'm fine physically. I'm a little rattled. I was um, picked up by the uh, SBU on uh, Friday, April 15th at a little after 1 p.m. local time. Um, I I'm okay physically. I'm a little rattled. Um, there seems to have been like a lot of interest in my case, which is wonderful. Thank you. But there are a lot of other people who are frankly more deserving of the attention. I've highlighted them in my Twitter feed, the uh, real Gonzalo Lira. Those people matter more because we don't know where some of them are. Some of them are have passed away, but uh, well, some of them were killed. And some were killed. They'll be quick to call some shit Russian disinformation. Like we stupid. Like we haven't been seeing for at least the last decade the entire Western media propagate Russian misinformation to the public like Kool-Aid. This is a very real portion of information warfare and psychological warfare. The dissemination of information to the public. You know, the underlying loophole in their deception will always be the fallacy of homeland security. We were not going to compromise any true military strategy during the time of conflict so they can lie to the public. They will spoon feed you misinformation to channel support for an unethical war. While simultaneously using that false information to manipulate oppositional military strategy. They'll call Vladimir Putin Adolf Hitler. The whole time they're funding neo-Nazis who use civilians as human shields and shoot babies in the back? Their treachery has no limit. Their irony has no bounds. And now, second big reason for inflation is Vladimir Putin and gas prices. Not a joke. We've seen the price of gas go up over a dollar just since he put his troops on the border, on the border of Ukraine. They went up a dollar and five cents. Big part of that reason is Putin began amassing troops along the border and then crossed. And guess what? The world took notice. The market anticipated. Prices went up. And then Putin invaded. Make no mistake, 
The current spike in gas prices is largely the fault of Vladimir Putin. They'll call Vladimir Putin Adolf Hitler. The whole time while funding neo-Nazi groups who use civilians as human shields and shoot babies in the back? Their treachery has no limit. Their irony has no bounds. Now you got this dusty old fuck slow Biden trying to blame inflation and gas prices on Russia? Nigga, we don't believe you. And if anybody were ever to mention the fact that the Biden family has made a Millions upon millions with their back end business deals funneled through China energy companies and Ukraine. That's Russian disinformation. But that's already proven to be true. Astounding claim. They said not only did they have proof of Ukrainian bio labs, but they also had proof that the president's own son, Hunter Biden, was involved in fundraising for those bio labs. The commander of the Russian Nuclear Biological and Chemical Protection Forces claimed that there is a scheme of interaction between U.S. government agencies and Ukrainian biological objects and pointed to the financing of such activities by structures close to the current U.S. leadership. In particular, the investment fund Rosemont Seneca, which is headed by Hunter Biden. Now, predictably, the White House and the Biden administration came out and said this story, of course, is not true. It's simply Russian disinformation. The only problem is then the Daily Mail came out and said, actually, it may not be disinformation. Not only that, but there is a lot of evidence that many of these claims are absolutely provably true because of emails on Hunter Biden's laptop. Remember the laptop that only a couple of weeks ago, the New York Times finally admitted that yes, it is in fact Hunter Biden's lost laptop. So here's what we know. Emails from Hunter Biden's laptop show that he was in fact an investor in and supporter of a company called Metabiota, a Department of Defense contractor specializing in research on pandemic causing diseases that could be used as bioweapons. Again, from the Daily Mail here, quote, he also introduced Metabiota to an allegedly corrupt Ukrainian gas firm, Burisma, for a, quote, science project involving high biosecurity level labs in Ukraine. And although Metabiota is ostensibly a medical data company, its vice president emailed Hunter in 2014 describing how they could, quote, assert Ukraine's cultural and economic independence from Russia an unusual goal for a biotech firm. April 2014, Metabiota Vice President Mary Gutierrez wrote a memo to Hunter outlining how they could, quote, assert Ukraine's cultural and economic independence from Russia. The average American does not give a fuck about Ukraine, but Joe Biden and his cabal of aristocratic pedophiles do. I'll ask again, who stands the most to profit from all this new inflation? since we can't blame Russia. Aren't these the same people who bankrupted the country over the last two years? Major corporations made record profits while the average citizen went broke? These niggas will look you dead in the face and blame all that fuckery on Russia. It can't be more crystal clear that they do not give a fuck about you. This nigga Joe Biden got to be the biggest okie doke of all time. Got him. I mean, how many of you niggas voted for him? Y'all got to be feeling stupid as fuck. I'll never forget all the self-righteous, anti-Trump leftists guzzling the Kool-Aid down. Just blah, 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 blah. Drink that shit. Where the fuck y'all at now? All the feminazi narcissists and pussified men. Where the fuck y'all at? Y'all the same shit. Y'all the same niggas that were talking shit about all the unvaccinated people, right? They kind of go hand in hand. The majority of the highly vaccinated population also voted for Joe Biden. That should go without saying. I don't know. You're vaccinated and you voted for Biden? Let's just say anything else you have to say is fucking invalid. Your ability to make decisions is a joke. Case in point. I need to get this bill to my desk as quickly as possible. 
Our economic strength is on the line. And national security as well as on the line. That was your decision. Companies are ready to invest. Wear this shit proudly. In American communities. In American Wear it proudly. Look at this nigga. He is trying to avoid eye contact at all costs. All these niggas do not want to be acknowledged. They don't want to have to smile at this nigga. They don't even want to look at this nigga. As soon as he walked by, they immediately looked down at their phone. This nigga look like he's trying to get out of here now. No respect for this nigga. And just like how nobody respects your president, nobody respects your opinion, you manby pamby go with the flow bitches. So go ahead, hop on the lip tart bandwagon, next stop, pedal land, and it's too late to get off. You're chained to that bitch. Hopefully in the next two years, Kanye can get his life back on track, because he fell way off. But he's your only hope. <laughs> Coming up, Dwayne Wade's transgender son, who identifies as a girl named Zaya, has started dating a transgender girl who identifies as a boy named Cody. Well, at least he looks like a Cody. Just what in fuck are we doing? And is this relationship so gay? It's actually straight. Because, you know, like they cancel each other out. Never mind. Never mind. Get me out of here, Clyde. I play to try something to push myself. To be part of a team. Team on three. Ready? I play to belong. I play to have fun. Transgender kids want to play too. Let us play. Yeah, I know, man. Just, hey, Clyde, could you mind doing me a favor? Do you think you could get in touch with somebody at the union? Yeah, I just want a second opinion on the whole Steve thing. Yeah. See if we can do something to get him out of here. Thanks, bro. And we're back. All right, guys. I knew that I had mentioned earlier about learning all the genders. Okay, so here's the fucking chart. All right. So I'm going to teach you a few things about all the genders, okay? Here we go. And we're going to be using Zaya and Cody's relationship, you know, as the equation here. Zaya was born a boy, but feels like a girl. Therefore, Zaya, look at the chart. Zaya's a boy male. Now, Cody's a little more tricky because Cody was born a girl, but feels like a boy. Look at the chart. This would make Cody a girl. Female. Now, here's where shit gets book wild, nigga. Here's where shit gets book wild. Book wild. Book. Shit get crazy, cuz. Shit get crazy, cuz. They not even gay, though. Not in the classical sense. They can have heterosexual sex and procreate a child. And at the gender reveal, 
All they got to do is put baby powder in the cannon. Because they don't know. They don't know. I was watching the NBA playoffs the other day, and I couldn't help but notice a transgender children's advertisement. And at the end of the commercial, it said something like, transgender kids deserve to play too. All I'm going to say is this. NBA, you are a motherfucking suspect. Hey, Dr. Umar got y'all on watch. Investigation. The National Basketball Association is a suspect in Dr. Umar's investigation. That's right. The goddamn NBA is a suspect. The goddamn NBA is a suspect. Transgender kids want to play too. Let us play. I wonder if the NFL will try to pull the same stunt. Do you think that an NFL audience would be as receptive to transgender children's advertisements as an NBA audience? We might find out. Better yet, how many women who feel like men are rushing into men's sports? If a woman wants to make it in the NFL and for some reason she doesn't make it, is it because she was discriminated on due to her gender? Or is it because she can't physically compete with men? I remember in high school, we had a girl on our football team. I'm not sure why she wanted to play. She wasn't a tomboy necessarily. She was more of a brainiac. No pun intended. I'm not sure why she wanted to play. But they let her play. And when it was all said and done, she never belonged on the field with little boys or high school boys. It was all we could do to not run over her every single time she got in the way. During that same time, I remember me and one of my homies scrimmaging the girls' basketball team. And after my 17th block, I realized that I shouldn't be out there with the girls. This year in June marks the 50th anniversary of Title IX. And for those of you who are not familiar with Title IX, Title IX was a law enacted by Congress that would guarantee women equal representation in sports as do men. Now here we sit on the half centennial of Title IX and women are about to have their sacred ground of true athletic womanhood invaded by men in the name of equality. Somebody call Atlantis Morissette. Shit. She probably support that shit. No, that would be ironic. Don't you think? Yeah, I really do think. It's like Ray. And they're asking that Navy is such an amazing player. Can she address the fact that she is strong and a great player? But is it 100% fair for her to play? Obviously, obviously, we know where this question is going because some people are going to look. Some people or look at you, or look at any trans athlete and say, you've got a quote-unquote unfair advantage. How do you answer to that? I mean, so the way I always look at this is I feel like there is this notion that women's sports has to always be kind of like less than or policed in a way to make it so that women can't do well or women can't excel, you know, like there are women who are taller than me, that are faster than me, that are stronger than me. And so I'm, you know, sometimes confused as to where my advantage may lay. Well, I'm, you know, sometimes confused as to where my advantage may lay. Nigga, your advantage comes from the fact that you were born with a dick and balls and the physiology of a man. You know, sometimes confused as to where my... Confused, yes. Juana Manchild looking face-ass nigga. Um, and also, I just think that that question is kind of biased in terms of, like, nobody's ever saying, like, 
that male players are too strong or they're too tall or they're too dominant to play in their division. You know, it's only like in the women's space that if you're good, you're too good. Almost like they don't want women's sports to be good, you know? And it's like- Bruh, the delusion on this nigga is next level. They need to lock this nigga up and throw away the key. This nigga is gone. This nigga is a danger to society. It's all, it's about how you identify and it's about the sport. Nigga, you're like, a man. I play women's sports because I want to have. What the fuck are you talking about? Women. Like that's the place where I feel my community is. That's the game that I enjoy playing. Um, those are the people that I want to be around. I want to compete with, you know. And also that's how I identify. And so that's where I want to be. I I mean, if I wanted to play in the men's sport in the men's space, no one would care because they'd say like, oh well, anyone can play men's men's sports because it's unregulated. But it's like. The women's sport or the women's space where there has to be these regulations. You know, I, this nigga does not give a fuck about women. He knows for a fact that women would get seriously hurt playing sports with men. It's funny the conversation that also comes from these crowds. You know, ultimately, they're shitting on natural born women. I would like to see this conversation go to a place where like, you know, individuals who are assigned female at birth are now, you know, the ire of gymnasts or ice skaters or people or men that want to do more feminine sports, you know, but we never see that. It's only, it's only a conversation we have when we're talking about women and women's spaces. This nigga's a loser. He doesn't respect women or their spaces and he will use his gender identity dysphoria to take opportunities away from women, legit women. All this for social clout. This nigga want to be a trendsetter. At this point, society has tricked parents into sacrificing their child's innocence in the name of tolerance. When this scheme is anything but tolerant. True tolerance would be tolerating or allowing your child to develop their own ideas about their own gender identity or sexuality without being coerced by brain-fucked adults during the most impressionable times of their development. You see, for this crowd, tolerance only works one way. Tolerate transgender children's propaganda. Tolerate that. Tolerate inflation. Tolerate corrupt politicians. Tolerate pedophilia. But ask them to tolerate criticism and they'll call you every name in the book. You know, the true definition of intolerance. So make sure you never miss an opportunity to call out these hypocrites. Speak the truth and shame the wicked. Until next time, I'll holla at y'all. Shalom. Thank you, Steve.